I blessed me with the ability to play the game. I had a lot of athleticism, but I wasn't great in terms of basketball skill. After a while, my, my skills started to catch up, catch up with my athleticism. Albert Nathaniel Cheney, born July 17, 1971. Today's feature is a guy that was supposed to be a star player in the NBA, just like he was in his four years at Indiana. Back when Indiana was still one of the premier schools on a prospects list that still had its aura of smart basketball with just the right touch of hard work and demand that comes with playing for a coach like Bob Knight in the 90s. Cheney came in as the soft-spoken, highly talented wing with a lot to prove coming off a broken foot that left him off most of the postseason high school awards that puts your name among the elite entering your college program. He more than made up for it by becoming Indiana's all-time leading scorer and as a senior winning every possible award he could, including being named the National College Player of the Year in 93 a class that included Chris Webber, Penny, Finn Baker, Allen Houston, and more. For his Indiana career, he shot an outstanding 43% from three, with two seasons shooting 45% or better, 49 his freshman year, and 47 as a sophomore. His 42% his senior year while attempting over three a game for the first time in those four years, along with his ability to rebound and defend, help solidify that the 6'7 Cheney could be a perfect fit in the NBA, or so they thought. This was also the Jordan era, so a prospect with Cheney's profile was highly sought after and expected to become great in the NBA in his own right. But things were immediately different for Calbert and his transition to the league. He was the 6th overall pick in the 93 draft ahead of 4 future All-Stars and expected to help change the fortunes of the woeful Washington Bullets who hadn't made the playoffs in 5 years prior to Cheney getting there and 8 straight years before they finally did in 96-97 being swept by the Bulls in the first round. He made the postseason a total of one time in his six seasons with the Bullets before quickly becoming a journeyman across the league as his production slid off a cliff every season post 97-98. Cheney had one of the best college basketball careers ever that immediately changed into one of the 90s biggest draft busts and it could be all attributed to his soft-spoken, easygoing, nice guy demeanor that got swallowed up by the self-centered, selfish, business-first-minded NBA. He played 13 seasons for five different teams and can be seen as one of the premier examples that amateur sports is not the pros, and what you do on the college level doesn't mean you're prepared to have the same success as the level gets higher and the entire landscape of what you knew basketball to be changes. What happened to one of college basketball's best ever? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Calbert Cheney was a 6'7 shooting guard small forward from Evansville, Indiana that became a star for William Henry Harrison High School before a broken foot his senior year left him off all the major awards lists to becoming somewhat of an unknown going into college. The Hoosiers had the number one recruiting class in 89, including McDonald's All-Americans Greg Graham and Pat Graham, Todd Leary, Chris Lawson, Lawrence Funderburg, and Chris Reynolds. But after a week of open gym and workouts, the team knew who the guy was. It was Cheney and he didn't disappoint, immediately becoming the team's leading scorer, a feat he'd accomplished all four years and finishing as the Big Ten's and Indiana's all-time leading scorer as well, that still stands today. Unlike high school, Cheney wasn't underrated going into the draft. In fact, it would have been hard to miss the guy that swept every award possible by that time, and if not the best in the class, certainly the most versatile. He was even called the prototypical NBA player, but Cheney had issues that in hindsight made that a very bold statement. Stunt number one, positional fit in the NBA. The first growth stunt for Calbert Cheney, in my opinion, was because he was a tweener that didn't fit either of the positions his game was suited when the level rose and competition got better. 
Six seven to me is one of those heights you just ask, what's the point, right? Five ten or six two, even six ten. Like, where's the last inch that could have turned me into a player with adequate or great size for the position, instead of being considered undersized and a liability? But more than size, Cheney had all the other negative factors to his game that made him not a really good fit for the NBA. Things like he was always either taller and stronger than amateur competition, so didn't need to immediately choose a specific position. At the same time, he never had to develop his ball handling and learning to create for others because he was the man in high school. Then he broke his foot, so lost development time in a high-pressured senior year, and came into a Hoosier system that wasn't known for individual play in the sense of one player pounding the ball every possession. Of course, Bob Knight was smart enough to see Cheney was special and needs his looks, but he often got them off multiple screens set for him, spot up three-point shooting against zones, or his one to two dribble pull-up mid-range jumper. He was prolific at. In the NBA or pro levels, things are much different. Being able to create for yourself or others is a huge necessity, and Cheney just seemed out of character and out of position. He wasn't a shooting guard because he couldn't consistently create off the dribble, and with the deeper three-point line, he couldn't shoot from deep either. Rarely even attempting a three once he got to the league. He also wasn't big or athletic enough to play the small forward position in the NBA. And again, he didn't have the ability to create like small forwards in the league are required to. He was really a power forward without size, but at the two or three position, it was okay. His first few seasons, when he still had enough athleticism to make up for his deficiencies, but as he got older, he couldn't sustain that, and it became evident he didn't translate from college to pros because he just wasn't a good fit. Stunt number two: shooting illusion. We spoke before about the great shooting of Cheney in college, which was better than Steph Curry and Klay Thompson on that level as far as career percentage. But then he got to the NBA and lost all touch. In Indiana's system, the Hoosiers pride themselves on ball movement and sharing the spotlight. One huge way they scored points was shooting the three-pointer off lane drive and kicks to break the zone. Cheney didn't attempt much a game, but his percentages suggested he'd at least be better than 29% for his career in the NBA. Most seasons attempting less than one three a game. He was lauded for his versatility in college, being able to score from the post, mid-range, and three. But because of his percentages and not the eye test of how natural it comes off, how much he's inclined to attempt them. And does he have the confidence to do it on a level other players on his team can make the same shot, and won't hesitate to take it if he won't? Because his college stats created the illusion he could shoot, it created expectations he wasn't equipped to meet. Stunt number three: easygoing demeanor. Lastly, what I think is an underrated factor of basketball, especially as the level gets higher, is does the player have a demeanor that also fits in with the highly competitive professional level? The NBA is filled with guys that have been stars on different levels, so developed a confidence they feel they can make or want to take as much shots as possible. A person with a team-oriented Unselfish, easygoing, nice demeanor can get swallowed up in that environment and find themselves underachieving at said level. Cheney was an easy to play with player that focused on making the right and unselfish play, just like something I could see Bob Knight preaching to his teams back then. After his time with the Bulls, he moved on to Boston, Denver, Utah, and Golden State as his production decreased. He retired at 34 years old and went on to coaching in the NBA and college, as well as work in other front office positions. All in all, no, Calbert Cheney didn't become the player expected, but he did play a long time in the league and had a stellar college career. Was he a bust? Well, yeah, but in context, he had great tools, just not suited for the NBA. And for these reasons, his growth was stunning. It's your boy JC's stunning growth. Come out.